My name is Frank DeCotta, and I wrote a book called The Tragedy of Liberation, A History of the Chinese Revolution, 1945-1957. One of the key ideas of the book is that there wasn't a golden age. Of course, we've had decades of propaganda in China about the peaceful liberation of China in 1949, and even abroad, many believe that the first years after the red flag went up over the Forbidden City in Beijing in 1949 were marked by peace and stability. On the contrary, what the book shows, on the basis of very detailed uh, documents from the party archives themselves, is that from 49 till 53, there was a period of systematic violence and calculated terror, and 1953 to 57, every promise that was made to every disaffected group uh, was broken. We have in mind images of people welcoming the People's Liberation Army when we hear the term liberation. And it is true that in many cities, people felt great relief at the end of civil war and expressed the hope that they might be able now to get on with rebuilding their lives, destroyed by the Second World War and, of course, by the Civil War itself. But the period, in particular from 1949 to 52, was extraordinarily violent. Land reform alone resulted in the expropriation of some 10 million people. About 1.5 to 2 million people were killed as landlords, tyrants, or traitors, even if their wealth was barely more visible than that of their neighbors. And then there is a campaign of terror that starts the moment that Mao enters the Korean War in October 1950. For a year, there's a reign of terror with a killing quota of one per thousand, where Mao orders one per thousand of the population to be publicly executed as nationalist remnants or spies, counter-revolutionaries. And that campaign, too, produces about two million victims, if we are to trust Boi Bo. In total, those very first years of the regime claim five million civilian lives. Mao and the Communist Party came to power very much like Lenin and the Bolsheviks by promising every disaffected group what they wanted most, the land for farmers, better working conditions for workers, freedom of speech for intellectuals, and of course, protection of private property for entrepreneurs and shopkeepers not to mention independence for minorities. Every one of these promises by 1957 had been broken. One of the reasons why the myth of a golden age is so powerful is that we all know that the Cultural Revolution was a cataclysm, a catastrophe. Not to mention, of course, the Great Leap Forward and Mao's Great Famine between 1958 and 1962. So all the party really has is the first years of the regime, which it portrays as a golden age. And of course, many abroad, some of them true believers, still have this faith that communism somehow worked in some way in China from 1949 till 1957. But the party archives abundantly show that this was not the case. One of the things I hope the book will do is to pretty much pull the rug from underneath the legitimacy of the Communist Party itself by showing that the early years of the regime weren't that golden age, but according to the documents compiled by the party itself, were a period of broken promises and systematic violence. And the party itself, in particular under Xi Jinping, is now increasingly going back to the 1950s to find, so to speak, tools to govern that country. As in 1952, Today, we have an anti-corruption drive. And as of 1952, private enterprises are increasingly scrutinized by the party, not to mention the self-criticism sessions set up by Xi Jinping, also directly inspired from the 1950s. So here's, here's a question. If Xi Jinping and the party are studying the 1950s, why shouldn't we be paying much closer attention?